Death in the Atlantic is a convoy war and the Enigma machine. The Battle of the Atlantic is one of the largest single confrontations in the history of war. From the start of World War II in 1939 till Germany's surrender in May, in May of 1945, the Germans and Allies waged a war of commerce and escorts through which America's industrial might outbuilt Germany's U-boats. But this wasn't the Allies' only advantage. By the end of 1942, the Allies had completely broken the code system used by the U-boats and had most of it during that year. The main weapon used by the Germans through the war was the U-boat. The U-boat was the common name used for German submarines. There were several types of U-boats used through the war, but the most common was the Type 7. This is the U-boat that attacked the majority of the convoys and was only a medium-range U-boat. The long-range version was the Type 9. These boats worked off the U.S. coast and a little bit in the Indian Ocean, and at least one sailed to Japan. All through the war, the Germans never suspected that their code had been broken. The reason for this was the Enigma machine. The machine itself looks almost like a typewriter, but somewhat different. The differences are the plug-in board at the front, the light-up letters, and the cogs on top of it. It's these cogs that make it work. And it was operated similar to a typewriter with the following exceptions. Before typing the message, the cogs would be set to the day's encryption. As you typed, the battery supplied power that moved it to a corresponding letter on the plug-in board. From there, it moved to a different letter and then to the cog. After being encrypted in the cog, it moved to the plug-in board as a completely different letter. And to a new letter, and then went up to the light-up letters to show what the encryption was. A good example is that if you typed S at the beginning of a message, it might come out as B. But if you typed it at the end, it might come out as H. At first, the Germans used a three-cog machine, but by mid-41, they had switched to a four-cog version, which was even harder to decrypt if you didn't have the code. However, there were other ways to get intel from radio messages besides decrypting them. One was direction finding, to get the approximate location of U-boats. This wasn't normally difficult due to the large amount of radio traffic, but very early in the war, in the campaign off the U.S. sea coast, and in a 1944 inshore campaign on Britain, there was very little radio traffic. On the other hand, from the autumn of 1940 through mid-41 and mid-42 through mid-43, there was a lot of radio traffic, so even if it couldn't be read, they could get a bearing. Then there was traffic analysis. In this field, they would piece together what different signals meant. For example, if they saw one type of signal before a large-scale attack, and then saw it again a few months later, they would be able to warn ships in the area. At first, this intel was simply used to divert convoys from dangerous waters, and if the British had controlled the U.S. Navy, that this is all that would have been done. In mid-1943, the U.S. took the offensive, using the intercepted messages referred to as special intelligence to hunt down and destroy as many U-boats as possible. The hunter-killer groups as they became known were made up of an escort carrier, a couple of destroyers, and about five destroyer escorts. In late 1940, they had quite efficiently cleared the seas of U-boats. However, the Germans did not give up without a fight. Though the U-boat losses were starting to increase in 1943, they hoped that the new electric and schnorkel boats such as the Type 21 and Type 23, if made operational in late 43, could change the tide of the war. It was As it was, the Type 21 wasn't ready till mid to late 44, and by then it was far too late to impact the war. Also in 43, the Allies started using new and more effective ASW weapons, one of the best known ones being the Hedgehog. The way the Hedgehog worked was by firing a large amount of contact bombs at the area the sub was in. With this method, the sonar could keep a lock on the target because they would only explode if they hit the sub. This and other weapons doubled the kill rate. By early 44, U-boats started operating alone as well as working with some air recon, but not enough to make a big impact. In addition, between January and March of 1944, the Germans lost 36 boats for only 3 merchants. 
Also thanks to special intelligence, air patrols were able to turn the Bay of Biscay into a U-boat death trap, forcing them to cross either submerge or operate from elsewhere. On the whole, this was a hard-fought battle, with it conceivably going either way. However, the one thing that tipped the balance in our favor was the breaking of the Enigma Code. By doing this, we knew where the U-boats were, how many were out, which convoys they planned to attack, and so forth. We also knew where to attack them, where to move convoys, and more. To summarize, without the help of special intelligence, the battle for the Atlantic would have lasted a lot longer or could have been lost. Without the work of the code breakers, the world would be a very different place. If you'd like to learn more on this subject, you can search online or go to the Mariners Museum website and see their online exhibits at www.marinersmuseum.org. Or you could come out to the Mariners Museum itself and see the many exhibits including the new Monitor Center and the Crabtree Ships.